Have you ever wondered what it would be like to go on a ship journey through a mountain? If you're wondering, well, that is just impossible, mountains don't have water, China has proven you wrong. They have made it possible for ships with over 3,000 tons of cargo to sail above mountains. But it took a lot of years for them to achieve it, and here's how they did. Gupatan's Shiplift Shiplifts are one of the ways the Chinese have made it possible for ships to sail above mountains. So here is how it works. There are two ship lifts in China, and we are first going to be looking at the Gupatan ship lift because it is one of the largest in the world with the capacity to carry ships weighing over 500 tons and standing at 653 feet. For more context on the capacity of this ship, the Great Pyramid of Giza is a little over 481 feet tall, and the Statue of Liberty is 151 feet tall. So when ships are on this Gupatan ship lift, the people on board would easily be able to see the top of the Great Pyramid if it were nearby. It shows how strong this ship lift is, but that is not all. So technically, it's ancient technology, Archimedes' principle deployed on a huge scale. This architectural wonder is situated on the Wu River, which is a tributary of the Yangtze River in Guizhou Province. It is incorporated into the Gupan Hydro Power Station, which generates over 9 billion kilowatt hours of electricity. With this much power, it is no wonder the Gupan ship lift is 23 kilometers long and is one of the most efficient in the world. So how exactly does the system work? When the lift was first built, the engineers wanted to leave it as a one-lift system that could carry over a thousand tons at a time, but that wasn't safe. Although it was possible, it posed a serious risk to the ship passengers and their cargo. So, in order to avert this risk, the Gupatan ship lift was separated into three different hydraulic lifts that are all connected by the water channels. Each lift amounts for the 1,800 tons that the ship lift can carry, and they work at a speed of 8 meters per minute. The lifts consist of two rows of hoist cable drums and gearboxes that are positioned on both sides of the boat lifting reservoir for each lift. Once one ship is lifted by the first lift, it is quickly moved to the second lift, and the first lift then carries another ship. By the time the first ship gets to the third lift, another one is carried by the first lift, making it a never-ending journey of ships over the large waterway. But this is not even the largest ship lift in the world, as the largest is also from China and can carry double the load of the Gupatan ship lift. We are talking about the Three Gorges Dam ship lift. Three Gorges ship lift. When the ship lift at the Three Gorges Dam was first introduced, many people called it a large elevator, and they didn't mean it in a mocking way. It looked and worked like a literal elevator. The only difference is that it was built for ships. Its scale, lifting height, and lifting capacity surpasses those of other overseas ship lifts. Now, the Three Gorges Dam project is the world's largest hydropower project. Look at ship lifts from countries like Belgium, where they have the Strappy 2 boat lift, which only has a capacity of 1,000 tons and a lifting height of 70 meters. Or even the Lundberg Elbe Season Canal lift in Germany, that has a capacity of 1,350 tons and a height of 38 meters. But while they are both impressive, they are nothing compared to the capacity of the Three Gorges Dam ship lift. This lift consists of four sets of symmetrically arranged drive mechanisms using gears and racks to rigidly support the four points of any ship's chambers it transports. This intricate system wasn't built just for the fun of it or to show people just how intelligent Chinese engineers can be. It was actually built to emphasize on the safety of the cargo that the ships carry. If you have come across videos of how ships navigate water, you would see different instances of the cargo overturning, and the majority of the things leaving China are exported to other countries. Who would want to receive damaged goods from another country? So, with the symmetrical system of the Three Gorges Dam ship lift, the cargo stays intact no matter how wavy the waters may be, ensuring protection of goods. And this is not even the end of this beauty. The Three Gorges Dam ship lift has been built with buffer and damping mechanisms to absorb impacts and vibrations. So, in the case of an earthquake during transportation of ships using the lift, the seismic forces will be transported to the tower columns, instead of causing the chamber to fall and cause major accidents. China tends to experience a lot of earthquakes because of where it is situated, but they have created a system that ensures their partners do not suffer loss no matter the natural disaster. The amount of time required for ships to pass through the locks at the dam is 150 minutes, but once they have passed that stage, they spend only 40 minutes passing through the ship lift because of how efficient this ship lift is. It transported over 84 million tons of vessels in the first half of 23 alone. 
But China has also created another system that allows passage between mountainous areas, and the technology behind it is impressive. The aqueduct. This technology we are talking about is the aqueduct. An aqueduct is a system of pipes, ditches, or canals that are used to convey water from one source to its main distribution point. To lift passing ships by almost 20 meters in order to safely transport them across the canal, in China, aqueducts are built through mountains to provide water that will transport ships from one point to another. But why does China need to build an artificial water source just to transport ships? Despite how blessed China appears, the majority of their good luck is in manpower and not necessarily in geography, since the country's topography gives them more mountains than water, but they are the number one exporter of almost anything in the world. They had to find alternative solutions. By building aqueducts, they were able to redirect water from their sources and create an artificial river in areas where they could not build sophisticated ship lifts. But it is important to note that aqueducts weren't invented in modern times. In ancient China, their emperors built aqueducts, but it was to provide drinking water for the people. When Chinese engineers are not using aqueducts to sail above mountains, they are using a different system that is as complicated as its name sounds. Three Gorges Lock Before the Three Gorges shiplift in China was built, vessels were still traveling, but how were they able to achieve that? To simply put it, they made use of the Three Gorges Dam, but that is an oversimplification of the intricate process that went into the transport of ships along the dam. Chinese engineers installed ship locks in the Three Gorges Dam with the aim of increasing shipping from 10 million tons annually to 100 million tons. In doing so, they were able to cut transportation costs between 30 to 37 percent, but the gorges are dangerous to navigate, and considering that it is a dam that generates billions of kilowatts of energy, how were they able to achieve efficiency? Because of introducing ship lifts, the design and construction of the locks were difficult for a variety of reasons. To materialize this smart canal lock system, a super-fast concreting technology was needed. For one, the water pressure was enormous at 61,000 cubic meters per second. This amount of pressure would require the ships to be raised or lowered over 100 meters. But how could they achieve that? With that kind of water pressure, there was no existing ship gate anywhere on the face of Earth that could withstand that pressure. So the engineers had to find an alternative solution, and they had to do it fast. So, to solve the problem, the engineers thought to build five locks instead of one, and that may have been the smartest decision. In fact, it was the smartest decision they made concerning transport across the dam, because the construction of five locks drastically reduced the water pressure in the dam. Each lock in the system raises or lowers a ship approximately 20 meters, as opposed to the 100 meters that was initially projected. And what's more fascinating is that the entire process of lowering or raising a ship takes a little over 30 minutes. The mechanism behind the lock is also basic, even though the design is intricate. To lower a ship, the ship is moved into a watertight compartment called a lock, and the gate is then closed behind it. After the gate is closed, the water in the compartment is released into the next watertight compartment, which is lower than the first one that the ship was originally lowered into. When the water in the compartment is released, the ship is lowered, and when the water level in the ship's lock is the same as the one in the next gate, a gate opens between the two locks, which moves the ship to the next lock. This process is repeated until the ship gets to the final lock and has been lowered to the level of the river. What about when the lock wants to raise a ship? It repeats similar steps, but the only difference is that instead of releasing water from the lock, water is pumped into the lock to raise it. So the mechanism is simply when one lock closes, the next opens and keeps the transportation consistent until the ship gets to its destination, which is the river. There are two series of ship's locks installed near the Three Gorges Dam, and each individual lock has a maximum vessel size of 10,000 tons. The locks are 280 meters long, 35 meters wide, and 5 meters deep. For more understanding of how long the locks, they are 30 meters longer than those at the St. Lawrence Seaway, even though they are only half as deep. Before the construction of the dam and locks, the maximum freight capacity at the Three Gorges site was 18 million tons per year. Although that was impressive at the time, why settle when you can do so much more? So the Chinese government worked hard to increase how many tons was passing through that route. And from 2004 to 2007, a total of 198 million tons of freight passed through the locks. 
With the introduction of the locks, the freight capacity of the river increased six times, and the cost of shipping was reduced by 25%. When the locks were built, they were not expected to carry more than 100 million tons per year, and it wasn't because it couldn't, but that was just the projection they expected. But by 2022, their cargo turnover reached 159.5 million tons. Since then, but there is a downside to using these locks. Since they are designed to be staircase locks, the inner lock pairs serve as both the upper gate of the chamber below and the lower gate of the chamber above. But the gates are the vulnerable hinge type that if they were to be damaged, the entire flight could end up being unusable until it gets fixed. So, if the locks were the only way to transport vessels, then the load would be too much, leading to delayed exports, and many partners of China would begin to look for alternatives. The good thing about this system of separate locks for upstream and downstream traffic is that the system is more water efficient than bi-directional staircase locks. But the big question is, why is China motivated to build ship lifts and locks? Is there an issue with their waterway, or is there more that the world doesn't know?